Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Blitz with me, Fujit. Hello. So today I want to look at this tank, the Sheridan, the Tier 10 American light tank. A tank that was once considered to be far too OP for its own good, what with its fire and forget missiles. But it's now actually considered one of the worst Tier 10 lights in the game, which can be a somewhat unfair moniker. Now look, I am one of the first to admit that I am a truly terrible Sheridan player, mainly because I suffer from two issues. Firstly, I am now over 50 years old, and my reaction times aren't as good as that of a younger person, and I also suffer a lot from ping. Two things that really don't help you when playing these sort of really super duper light tanks. However, that doesn't prevent me from trying to improve. And over the last few days, I've been spamming the Sheridan in a vain attempt to get slightly better at it and improve my overall stats. And to my surprise, I actually discovered the Sheridan isn't as bad as either myself or no doubt quite a few of you out there believe. So what is it about this tank? What is it about this tank that people really struggle with? Well, look, there are a lot of weaknesses that we need to take into account before we even attempt to consider other strengths. And to do that, we need to jump into Blitz Stars. Here we are in Blitz Stars. Now I've lined up all the Tier 10 light tanks. And as you can see, we've got the Sheridan, the T100 LT, the Vickers Light 105, and the Batchat 25T. All the Tier 10 lights. Now, look, excuse the birthday noise going in the background. That happens to be the garage. It's almost as bad as the dog barking during spring. So first and foremost, we can see the DPM is not the best. I mean, it's 2,493 compared to 3,400 on the LT, 3,200 on the Vickers, and 2,857 on the Batchat. And the Batchat is an autoloader. So, you know, it's, it's not the same kind of beast. But the thing is, you know, you have to appreciate this tank is not a DPM machine, it's a derp machine. And, and that means it's slightly different. You can see that the penetration isn't the best either. It's 230 compared to all the others, which is 240. But this is where the Sheridan then starts to sort of take its dominance. It is knocking out 560 alpha compared to just 310 to 350 of the other tanks. I mean, that is almost double. I mean, that is huge, to be honest with you, which is why you start to see the struggle in this tank, because it really is the T49 of tier 10. The rate of fire is only four, well, it's shy of four and a half shells a minute. Now compare that to the T100, which is 11 shells a minute, the Vickers, which is just over nine a minute, and the Batchat, which is just over nine a minute. And again, the Batchat is an autoloader. So you're getting three showers for the price of one. Reload time in the Sheridan is where everybody starts to become unstuck. Shy of 14 seconds. That is lengthy. Let's not kid ourselves here. But the reason it's lengthy is because you are churning out a shed load of damage. I mean, you are churning out E100 damage at this stage. And this is a light tank, remember. It's not a super heavy. It's not a TD. It's a light tank. So when you're knocking out that much alpha damage in a light tank, and light tanks are mobile and nimble, you've got to have a trade-off somewhere. And the trade-off is the reload time. Caliber, well, 152. It's the same as the ISU 152, basically. And it's churning out that level of damage. And you really can put a lot of pain on people. Shell velocity, however, is pretty low. So you're going to get some, well, pretty nasty dispersion in this thing to be honest with you. And it loses its penetration over distance. Looking at the aim time, well, the aim time again is totally, totally horrendous. I mean, two and a half seconds with for all intents and purposes. That's a whole more second than the others in its class and tier. But again, you're trading off this massive derp because it really is massive derp for, 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 for this. Dispersion, wow, 0.38 is massive. I mean, that means it's going to go sort of like this, 0.38 of the time, whereas yours is just like 0.31. That, that's, a, that's a lot of dispersion. 
Gun depression, well, it's better than the LT, and it's better than the Bat Chat, but, you know, and it's equal to that of the Vickers. So this, this isn't a tank that struggles. I mean, 10 degrees of gun depression in this thing is pretty nice. Speed, 65 kilometers an hour. Okay, it's not as fast as the LT, but it's comparable to the other two. Engine power, well, it's not the best, but it's okay. Power to rate ratio isn't that bad either. And you can see there, it's a terrain resistance is pretty decent. It's comparable to the others. Camouflage profile, not the best, but then again, it's a big derp gun. And, you know, it's the worst of all the lights. Credit code efficiency, not the best either. Comparable to the Bat Chat, not as good as the Vickers. I don't have any information on the LT. Hit points, well, it's got pretty decent hit points, 1800, which is better than the LT, better than the Vickers. Not as good as, and it's the same as the Bat Chat. So it's not too bad, but it doesn't have any armor. And we'll get to that in a moment, because that is also a bit of a misnomer, as you will see, but it doesn't have any armor, not really. Now we go down to the win rates, and as you can see here, it is struggling. Even the Bat Chat, which a lot of people are saying is the worst tier 10, light tank is beating it win rate wise across the board i mean look at the out 100 i mean the out 100 is, is going to get a nerf um, in 9.1 there's no doubt about it. it it is far too dominant in the tier and it will get tinkered with the vickers light is still a great little tank not many people are playing it and you can see there it's pretty much comparable to that of the out 100 whereas the bat chat well people are struggling in the bat chat the, the Sheridan is beating it on DPM, or well, sorry, on, on, on average damage. They're beating it on damage ratio. It's beating it on spots and it's beating it on survival because people struggle in the bat chat. And, you know, we probably have to do a video on the bat chat. When you look at the Sheridan and compare it to that of the bat chat, you can see that these two are the trickiest lights in the game. That doesn't mean to say, however, the Sheridan is a bad tank because it's not. It, it's just a different tank. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna jump into Armour Inspector and have a look at that armor. So this is the Sheridan Fronton. It's facing off against an E100 here with its stamina ammunition. And as you can see, automatically, it's sort of very green. Apart from the sides, I mean, the sides, you're gonna get some troll bounces here because there's a lot of spaced armor around the sides of this tank. But nine times out of 10, I mean, this tank is wide open. You can see it, it's just not, a very well armored tank however I mean this is a misnomer because this is with AP as you can see when I turn it slightly its ass becomes very very bouncy and a lot of people don't realize that when they, when you know when you see the Sheridan being smacked side on you sort of you know, it bounces you scratch your head and say how did that happen well this is why it happens because when it goes side on its arse does become very very bouncy indeed if I keep turning it around you can see that the arse remains pretty bouncy to be honest you know it, it's 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 like that and when you what i'll do i'll take you back in a moment to the garage and i'll show you why that is but that's basically what the sheridan looks like doesn't matter if you go haul down because you know it doesn't really matter now, as i said we'll look at that rear and what i want to do i want to show you here so You've got these panels, and you can see where the, the, the very rear panel there, which has got some writing on, it's also black. That is heavily armoured, and you can see it's all around the back. And this, and you, if I show you at the top, you can see that it's realistically spaced. This is all space armour down the side. And this is why you're getting those troll bounces on the Sheridan. Sometimes you'll get a troll bounce on the front, mainly because of this big, see where you're next is i mean that that's a big armor plate funnily enough and whilst armor inspector doesn't fully show it you are going to get troll bounces on this thing to be honest with you especially at this back end and sometimes at the front so it can happen with this tank i'm not saying it does all the time but it can happen here we are on port bay and i'm going to the obligatory where you should, should be going in a light or medium tank to this corner overlooking the sea cap and already we can see we've got some trade the leo and the lt100 now you have to bear with me a little bit with my voice and everything got a bit of a head cold going on at the moment and it's sort of making me talk through my nose a lot more than i normally would so apologies for that 
But what we're going to do, we're going to, you know, we, we're trying, see, there you go with that bounce on the arse. Now, what I'm trying to do here is try to use the Sheridan as you're meant to use. Now, the thing about the Sheridan is it's an ambush tank, okay? You, you, you've got to know where you're going to find your next bit of cover whilst you're waiting for your load time. Now, I didn't particularly want to shoot the LT there, or would have preferred the, the Chieftain to do it, because it's just a waste of my dirt. But we had no choice, he was like taking too long. Now, once you've got loaded, and once you've managed to get yourself in the right position, then you really are going to dish out a lot of pain towards your enemy. And that is the trick to playing the Sheridan. You've got to know where your exits are. You've got to know where you can stay safe while you wait for your very long load. And that's that's the trick. It's, it's not a tank you can stick on the front line. Not really. And it's certainly not a tank that you can sit at the back and do a TD type thing. It isn't that type of tank. It is an ambusher. What it does, it, it hides, it stays in cover, it uses its mobility to get in quick, to smack the bejesus out of the enemy, and then run away while it reloads. And it's a menace to society. That is the whole point of the Sheridan, to be an absolute menace, to be a pain in the backside, to knock out a shed load of damage one shell at a time. And Contrast that with the LT. Now the LT is there to run around like a crazy thing, really being a pain in the backside with its excessive DPM. This thing, completely different type of game, completely different type of tank. Now you see there, in a short matter of time, we did just shy of three and a half thousand damage. And as I said, I'm not, by any stretch of the imagination, a good Sheridan player. In fact, Sheridan is one of the worst tanks I've got. But I've been working hard to try and improve that and as i said a lot of things go against me but i'm happy with that i'm happy with getting a second class and doing 3.4k this is another supremacy game this time on rockfield and you know if you've come here to look at big super massive damage or ace masteries you're in the wrong place my friends i'm here to show you how the tank plays I'm not here to show you how good i can be or another player can be because that's disingenuous, because not every game is going to be an ace mastery, not every game is going to be massive damage. The idea of this game is to win. The idea of the game is not to get aces, and the idea of the game is not to get high damage. Okay, These are all bonuses, these are afterthoughts. The idea of the actual game is to win. And all I'm showing you is showcasing you a tank and how to politically play it. So we're going to take the C cap here, now we're going to get rushed. The Sheridan does struggle with penetration on certain tanks, must admit. So now I've got tanks around me, I've got to run away from here. But before I do so, what I want to do, I want to, I want to get a shell loaded before I run away. I want to try and bait them at the same time, because I can see all my heavies are over at the A cap. So I want to bait them. I've been spotted, so I'm trying to bait them over, and they're not taking the bait, which is really annoying, so I thought, oh, damn it, let's just run away. Now, I did say, or I try to say, that you shouldn't really be sat around sniping in this thing. It's not that type of tank. However, there are certain cases when you, you're left with no choice. And if you can see here that literally all my heavy tanks are on this side of the map. So there's no point me sitting over there brawling away in a vain attempt to stay alive because it's not going to happen. I don't have the DPM to do that kind of a brawl. I've got to protect my tank. I've got to ambush. And um, sometimes that means you've got to be a bit of a sniper, which is all I'm doing here now. I'm, I'm in a relatively safe position, okay? I've got a pretty decent camo profile from this side of the map. I've got cover left and right and behind. I can therefore fire and forget. They're all there. I'm, I'm having to use heat because the penetration does struggle against certain tanks like the VK-72 uh, and like the Type 71 and even like the E100. I mean, they're heavily armoured, so you have to change it up if you're hitting them frontally. And at the moment, I'm sat at the back, so I have to hit them frontally. And therein lies the problem. Now, I could have had AP there and it's on the side. I didn't realise he was going to turn his turret like that. Now, we've already done 1,500 damage. 
we're doing okay. We took a base, they've retaken it. We're okay at the moment. You know, we, we, we are in a particularly nice position and we're just smacking out that dirt every 15 seconds so far. And that's the thing. Now, I can sit here and it's enough time for me to reset my camo before I reload. Now I'm reloaded, I can poke my head around the corner again, and try and get a shot. I'm th this time, I'm not going to be able to get any shots onto that VK. Can't get any shots onto the E100. So now I have to reevaluate my plan. What am I going to do? Now, there are four tanks still out there. So I've got to consider something. So, oh, hello, we can take you out. And we do. Now there's only two tanks, an E100, and I, I, I believe it's some guy, like Bat Chat or something. I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Yeah, it's a bat chat. So what we're going to do now, we're going to try and put some some pain onto the EU-100. And this is how I've been just finding that you need to play the Sheridan. You need to be an ambush tank. You need to think ahead. Playing the Sheridan is like playing chess. You've got to think a couple of moves ahead. Don't try and brawl in this thing. You're never going to out-DPM anything. I mean, the FV4005 will probably out-DPM you. So there's no point in trying to brawl in this thing and try and out-DPM anybody. Yeah, we only do 2,900, but we get a nice second class, and I'm happy with that, to be honest with you. I'm happy with those type of games in the Sheridan. We win, I, I, I get a second class, and, you know, I don't think I did too badly, considering that I really cannot play this tank. Here we go on Normandy, an another map that I particularly like. I'm in a tune this time with Tony from my clan Vale, and again it's another supremacy game. And I, I'm not a big fan of supremacy, but 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 I have to play it every now and then. So the Sheridan does have 10 degrees of gun depression. And funnily enough, you can use it. So I've come up to this obligatory windmill to have a try and get these spots. And I can see that there's a T100 LT. Now look, he's going to hit me for what? 200, 300, but I can, if I get a good roll into him, I'm not him close to 600, look. So he hits me for 300, I hit him for double. That is a fair trade. I have more hit points than he does. He has got a bloodier nose than I have. And when you hear about people trading and doing fair trade, that's what you need to do. Now I've gone back to a relatively good position of safety, wait for me to load, then I'm going to use the mobility of the tank and a bit of the gun depression to get down there and to smack. I want the LT, and there we go again, another 600. So we've knocked 12, almost 1,200 HP out of that poor old LT. And he, he, the LT is a dangerous, dangerous tank. Now I can see the, the, the IS-7. I'm going to be swamped here, so I'm going to sort of run away a little bit again. Use this big rock for cover and try and give this IS-7 a bit of a hard time. Again, trying to penetrate him frontally isn't the easiest thing to do. Now look, the enemy team here, they should have absolutely tried to annihilate me. Their problem is, we've got a lot of TDs sat in the TD camp. And if you look at the minimap, we've got more than that. So now we're going to try and kill the LT goes down, because of the Jaeger route. Now what we want to do now, is, you know, I didn't want to hit the IS-7 because it's a waste. So we're going to smack the WZ-121 instead. I've now only got 300 HP. You know, I've got a T-62 and a 121. I've got to be very, very careful. Because either of those tanks can take me out with one shot. Because I am effectively a one shot. So I've got to be mindful of what I can and cannot do here. Now look, we've already got the points. Maybe I can get him. No, I just couldn't get the gun down quickly enough. That was a wasted shot, and it was terrible, to be fair. We've already done 2.8k. At the moment, we're in charge. It's by far not in the bag yet. I mean, okay, we've got the points on the board, but there are still a lot of decent tanks out there. So what we're going to do now, we're going to try and farm this E100 and see if we can get a good roll into it. Oh, we don't need to now. So we'll take him out. Down he goes. Now we're at 3,000 damage. And we've just got the Jaegeru left. So again, no point rushing in. Wait for your gun to load. Then use the mobility. Get over there. Get the ambush. And smack him as hard as you can. And that's exactly what we did. We end the game with 3.5k damage. We only take one kill. But I don't care. 
at the end of the day, these are the games that I like. It's another win. My win rate goes up slightly. My stats on the Sheridan go up slightly. And that makes me happy. And I get another second class. As I said, it's not all about big damage. It's not all about golden M's. It's about winning. And, you know, the way to winning in a Sheridan is treat it like it's an ambush tank, guys. Don't be headlong. Let's rush in and kill everything because it ain't going to work for you. Anyway, guys, I've been Fujit and that's been the Sheridan. I hope you enjoyed that. By all means, comment in everything below. Just give me your thoughts because, as I said, I am truly a terrible player in a Sheridan. Okay, and it, 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 it takes a lot of effort for me to try and get better in tanks such as the Sheridan because I do have some disadvantages. As I said, I'm getting older and I've got terrible ping, which really doesn't help. But I'm trying my best and I'm learning as I go along. Uh, so if you've got any great tips, let me know. I mean, I'm starting to enjoy the Sheridan a lot more than I used to, I, I have to admit. You know, it's, I used to hate this tank and I used to hate jumping in it, but now I'm starting to enjoy it a bit more. But anyway, as I said, that's been my take on the Sheridan. By all means, comment everything below. Give me your thoughts. Tell me how to play it. Tell me how you play it. Tell me your thoughts on it. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Whatever. Because I'd love to know. You know, because if you tell... The, the idea of the feedback is not to turn around and say, great video. The idea of the feedback is to say, look, do this, do this. Because that way we educate the player base around us. And if we don't educate the player base around us, you know, we're going to still have, you know, numpty players coming in who are completely clueless because they've seen some high damage game or some, you know, amazingly OP game. They think they can emulate it. When nine times out of ten, they can't. So let us know. Give me your tips. Give me your views. Give me your thoughts because that's the whole idea of it. Anyway, until the next time, guys. By all means, comment everything below, as I said. But more importantly, stay safe on the battlefield. Stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking. Because at the end of the day, that really is what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.